Hey everyone, today we're going to look at how to configure snapshots on a Synology NAS. So snapshots are something that everybody should have configured. So we're quickly going to walk through how to configure it, but we're mostly going to be looking at why you should have these configured. Before we get started with this, I want to mention that your Synology NAS has to support BTRFS and you have to be using that type of volume. If you try and use this on EXT4, it's not going to work. So snapshot functionality does not come standard on a Synology NAS, meaning that you have to install a new package in order to set it up. So go to the package center and install the snapshot replication package. When it's done installing, you can launch it and then you're going to go to snapshots. At that point, you're going to see all of your folders that you have created on your Synology NAS. What you need to do is you need to click the settings button and then you have to go through these settings to configure snapshots. So generally, you want these to run on a schedule. I generally run them daily, but some people have specific folders that aren't modified that often. So doing something like weekly might be better for you, but generally you just wanna ensure that you're getting consistent snapshots. The last thing that you have to look at is the retention section, and this is gonna be how many snapshots you'd like to retain. So basically, every single time a snapshot is taken, a new version of that snapshot will exist. So the best way that you could think about it is if every single day you take a snapshot and you're retaining seven versions, when you get to the eighth version, it will delete the oldest version and it will then store the newest version. So there's a bunch of different options here, but it's just pretty much configuring how many versions it should store before it starts to delete them. Now, technically you can store them forever. The issue with snapshots is that they take up space on your NAS. So as soon as you enable snapshots, you're gonna see that your free space is gonna go down daily. And the reason for that is because it's storing those files at a point in time. So generally, you're not gonna be able to store all versions at all times because it's just, you know, you don't have that type of space. But if you go through and you set it up and set every single folder to have a normal retention schedule, you're gonna have snapshots for all of your folders and you should have plenty of space. So now that you set snapshots up, let's talk about why you'd want to set these up and how they could help you in the future. So think of snapshots as freezing your files in time. So if you think of your folder right now, if you have a shared folder and you think of that folder, the way that the files are exactly at this point in time, it will save them. So if tomorrow comes and you accidentally delete a file or you delete a folder, you can go back to that snapshot and restore that data. Now this doesn't make snapshots a backup. It's very important to note that. You're not gonna be able to just configure snapshots and say all of my data is officially backed up. You still have to practice the 321 backup rule, which is three copies of your data on at least two different devices with one offsite. This is not a replacement for backups, but what it is is a great way of storing your files at a point in time. So after you have all of your snapshots set up, what you can do is you can go through and navigate through those different versions. So your NAS basically mounts that snapshot as a browsable folder, and you can go through and you can download the specific files that you might need. So like I said, this is not a replacement for backups. You should definitely be using something like Hyper Backup to either back up to the cloud or an offsite NAS or something like that. And if you're interested in um, learning how to do that, I have a few different tutorials up that will show you how to do that. So in summary, snapshots basically freeze your files at a point in time. If you need to, you can go back and browse that full snapshot and download specific files if you'd like, or you can even restore the entire folder back to a state in time. That's the true power of having snapshots. So as always, if you have any questions that I didn't answer in this video, please leave them in the comments. I do my best to always get back to you guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks, guys.